Imagine, if you will, a country turning its largest desert into a forest. Not someday, right now. Not just a few trees. But the biggest man-made forest in human history. Sounds like a movie, right? But this is real. And it's happening right now in China. Back in the 1970s, things looked bad. Dust storms buried whole towns and crops failed. And people couldn't breathe. One of the largest deserts on Earth, the Gobi, was spreading fast, eating up land every year. Imagine waking up one day and your whole town is under sand. The sky turned orange. The air was thick. You couldn't even see your own house. That's when China said, enough is enough. They launched something massive, a project that would take over 70 years to finish. Something so big, some people thought it was impossible. But the clock was ticking. And the desert kept growing. So what did they do? They decided to fight the sand with trees. Back in the 1950s and 60s, China was growing fast. But that growth came at a cost. Trees were cut down to build cities, fuel factories, and clear farmland. At first, no one thought much of it. But the trees had been holding the land together. Once they were gone, the trouble began. Without tree roots to hold the soil, the wind took over. Every year, more and more land turned into desert. The Gobi Desert started moving. Not slowly, either. It swallowed up over 3,000 square kilometers of grassland every year. That's like losing a city the size of Los Angeles. To sand. The skies turned yellow. In some years, cities like Beijing got hit with over 50 giant dust storms. Flights were canceled. Roads were closed. People stayed indoors for days, trying to breathe through masks. Farmers gave up. Crops died. Whole villages moved away. The desert was winning. And fast. So what do you do when a desert is eating your country? You fight back with trees. In 1978, China launched something no one had ever tried before. A wall of trees across the north. Not a stone wall. Not a fence. An actual forest. The plan? Stop the sand from spreading and bring life back to the land. They called it the Three North Shelter Belt Program, but today it's known around the world as the Great Green Wall. Picture this, a forest stretching over 4,500 kilometers, longer than the U.S.-Mexico border, and in some places it's 100 kilometers wide. That's more than just a wall. That's a green shield. This wasn't a one-year fix. It was a mission to plant billions of trees over decades. The goal? Finish by 2050. But thanks to new tools and tech, they're actually ahead of schedule. So far, more than 100 billion trees have already gone into the ground. It's the largest forest-making project in human history. Planting trees in a desert sounds crazy, right? The land is dry, rain is rare, and most trees die fast. But China didn't give up. Instead, they turned to science and came up with some wild ideas. First, they made something called a fish-scale pit. These are tiny half-moon shapes dug into the dirt. Why? To catch every drop of rain. That small change helped trees grow way better. Tree survival went from 20% to 80%, a huge difference. Then, Chinese scientists started making their own trees. No joke. They built 85 new kinds just for the desert. One of them, a Siberian elm, can grow roots as deep as a 26-story building, and it only needs as much water as a cactus. They also split the desert into zones. Some places got shrubs, others got grass. This mix helped the soil stay strong and the forest grow faster. It wasn't just about planting trees. It was about planting smart. So... Did all this tree planting actually work? Let's take a look. Since China started the Great Green Wall, they've planted over 100 billion trees. That's enough to circle the earth 60 times. And it's not just numbers, the land is changing. Forest cover in northern China has grown from 5% to 13.5%. That may not sound huge, but it's millions of acres of new green land. Dust storms? Way down. In Beijing, they used to get hit by over 50 storms a year. Now, that number has dropped by more than 80%. The skies are clearer. The air is cleaner. People can breathe easier. And here's something cool. 
Those forests are now helping people too. Places that used to be dead dry now grow fruits, nuts, and timber. Jobs have popped up. Farmers are farming again. Even tourists are visiting these new green zones. It's still early, but China's desert fight is already paying off. Okay, let's take a quick break from trees and deserts. Because did you know there's a massive pyramid in China? Yeah, not Egypt, China. It's called the White Pyramid, and for years people thought it was just a legend. Some say American pilots spotted it during World War II, hidden deep in the mountains near Xi'an. It's huge. Some claim it's even taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. But here's the weird part. China barely talks about it. It's not on tour maps. It's not in school books. So what is it? A burial site? An old temple? Something older than we even know? Nobody really knows. Some people think it was built by an ancient civilization that's been forgotten. Others say it's just a hill with fancy stories. But one thing's clear, China's full of surprises. From hidden pyramids to massive tree walls, this country's got layers. And speaking of the tree wall, let's get back to it. Because the next part is where things get tricky. So planting millions of trees sounds like a perfect plan, right? But here's the truth. It's not that simple. Some of the trees didn't make it. In places where water is super hard to find, they dried out fast. Some areas turned into tree graveyards. That's because trees need more than just dirt and sun. They need care, the right kind of tree for the right kind of land, and enough water to survive. Another big issue, monoculture. That means planting the same type of tree over and over. Sure, it looks green. But if one bug or disease hits, it could wipe out a whole area. Forests need a mix of trees, just like a team needs different players to win. And there's the human side. Some farmers were told to move or stop using the land. That caused problems too. So, while the Great Green Wall is amazing, it's not perfect. But they're learning and trying new ideas. Let's see what they figured out next. China saw the problems and didn't give up. Instead, they started to get smarter. First, they switched from planting just one kind of tree to using many types. Some trees are better at holding water. Others grow slower but stay strong. By mixing them, the forest stays healthier and can handle bugs or weather changes better. It's like building a team where everyone has a special job. They also started using tech. Satellites help watch the trees from space. If something's wrong, like too little water or sick plants, they can spot it fast. Then they send workers or machines to fix it. And here's something cool. They're using special soil made from old plants and water-saving tricks to help new trees grow better in dry places. This isn't just about planting anymore. It's about thinking, learning, and building forests that last. But there's still one more thing we need to ask. What started in one dusty corner of China is now catching the world's eye. Countries in Africa are building their own Great Green Walls. Places like Ethiopia and Senegal are using some of the same ideas, mixing tree types, working with local people, and watching the land from space. Even places like Brazil, India, and Australia are taking notes. Why does this matter? Because deserts are spreading everywhere. Shifting weather patterns are turning dry regions even drier. If China's plan works, it gives hope that other countries can push back too. It shows that even a huge challenge like turning desert into green land is possible if you plan, use smart science, and stick with it. This isn't just China's story anymore. It's a global one. And maybe, just maybe, it's the kind of story we all need right now. But wait. What if this isn't the end? What if this is just the start of something bigger? If deserts can turn green, what else might be possible? Think about it. What if your country tried something this bold? What if planting trees could stop floods, bring back rain, or even cool your city? Now here's the real question. Should more places be doing what China did? Or is there a better way to fight back against desertification? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We read every one. And if this made you think, even just a little, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. Because we've got more stories that make you look at the world a little differently.